If you're charged with a DUI in Alabama, there's a good chance that they're going to try to test to determine the alcohol percentage in your blood. Now these tests can be done a variety of ways. I'm going to talk here right now about the breath test, but you need to know that the testing can be done with a blood test, it can be done with a urine test, it can even be done with a hair test. They can test your hair. But realistically, you're either going to be talking about a breath test usually, or sometimes a blood test if there's been a wreck involved. As I said, right now we're going to talk about the breath test. It's the most common type and what we most see. Now breath tests, sometimes there's a roadside test with a small machine that they put in your mouth, a preliminary breath test, sometimes called a PBT. Usually those results, they're not considered admissible because the machines aren't considered reliable enough to get past that threshold of, well, we gotta be trustworthy. In other words, a judge isn't gonna allow somebody to come testify, well, I read the tea leaves and it says this person's good. It's not considered reliable enough. So that test, while the police will rely on it, most courts are not gonna allow that into evidence because it's not considered strong enough or good enough or reliable enough. Now, there are a variety of machines that Alabama uses that are not that preliminary test. One of them is called the Drager. In the past, they've used something called an intoxilizer, but they will have a machine, typically, that a person will blow into a couple of times, and they'll get a reading or readings, and from that, they will estimate the blood alcohol content of the person. So these tests can usually detect alcohol from up to 12 to 24 hours, again, depending on what machine and a variety of factors. A DUI lawyer will, of course, attack the results of these readings, particularly a high blood alcohol test. And they'll look to see a variety of things. Was the breath test conducted properly? Was the breath testing machine properly calibrated? These things have to be calibrated. Was it properly cleaned? You know, if, for example, if they don't clean the machine and somebody else, you know, they use these from a variety of people, if somebody else has blown in it before, are you testing for their residual mouth alcohol also? So your lawyer is going to look at a whole bunch of factors to determine whether or not the testing was done in a, whether the machine or the testing gave a reliable result. And, and you know, if it's not reliable, if it wasn't properly functioning or operating, does it have sufficient accuracy to even be trustworthy? And this is something that most DUI lawyers will try to attack. It can be done in a couple of ways. If it's really questionable, it's possible that the judge may say, I'm not letting that in. It doesn't meet the threshold uh, level of reliability. It's not trustworthy enough to even let it get in front of a jury. Now, most DUI cases are initially tried without a jury anyway, but the judge can keep it out of evidence. More often, judges tend to say, well, I'm going to let it in. You can argue the weight. Uh, you can argue, well, you shouldn't believe it because. Uh, and then you're, what's your lawyer going to do? He's going to do just that. He's going to argue, look, these results aren't trustworthy. They're, they're not to be believed because of a variety of factors. Um, and you know, when was the testing conducted might be an issue. For example, when you drink alcohol, when you take your first sip, you're not intoxicated, assuming you're even getting intoxicated. But as you drink alcohol, it gets absorbed into your system, and it, it's what's called alcohol being on the rise. It gets to some level, and then as your body metabolizes it, it slowly descends until it's eliminated from your body. And that has to do with a variety of factors, such as your health, your metabolic rate, uh, your age, and other things. It's also important to note that the breath at the time it's tested is not the same as the breath at the time that you're driving. There's been some period of time that's elapsed. Is it measuring, in other words, if you tested 0 0.08 and you did it when the test came, well, what about the time of uh, when you were driving? You might have been a 0 0.06. You might have been lower because you weren't driving then, you were driving earlier. So these things are, are factors that your lawyer will look into. It's very important that you have a knowledgeable DUI lawyer. Let's face it, this stuff can be very complex. A sophisticated DUI lawyer is going to have knowledge of not only of the law and all of the nuances of the law relating to DUI, but also knowledge of the scientific areas. And that includes things such as chemistry, a person's metabolism, certain kinds of illnesses that can affect it, other factors. So. DUI 
although not necessarily recognized as a specialty by the bar, is a specialized field within the criminal law. And you want a lawyer who's really well versed on that, who knows his stuff, because the right lawyer who knows what, are, what they're doing can make a big difference on the outcome of the case. If you are charged with any kind of crime in North Alabama and you want our help, just give us a call. The phone number is below. I hope that you're not in a legal jam, but if you are, we're happy to help you. If we can't help you, we'll send you to somebody who can. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos and you want to see more, just hit the subscribe button.